Hi everyone, welcome to Battery Commodity and our new format, Weekly News. Yes, Weekly News, the series where we try to uh, give you guys the updates of the small cap companies and the mining companies that we follow in a once per week format. And our designer Kasha has been so kind to make these amazing tiles, so we'll be using these um, and give you a quick update on the news and also on the formats that we're currently working on, on the interviews that we are processing to give you the in-depth coverage. All right, let's get into it with the first company, Arne. Exactly, and without further ado, first one on the list, Joby. Very interesting, Brian Sandberg, 24 years at the US Navy as a test pilot, and then six years at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. That's the secret division that's in the drone space that does all that cool stuff. He's joined Joby. He's joined Joby as a flight test lead. Um, very interesting. And you just got to look at what's happening right now in Ukraine, in the drone space, in the surveillance space, and um, to see why that could be very, very critical. I know it's not key to the mission of Joby, but then again, they already have $180 million defense contract secured. There is a big budget and they could expand that partnership with the US Air Force. So really cool to have that person join them um, it's the people that make uh, the magic happen. So having Brian Sandberg on board, definitely a big asset for Joby. Yes, definitely. It's the people that make the magic happen. And of course, having great engineers in your team is super important, but someone that has the vision, that has the experience in the aviation world, that's crucial. So um, yeah, a great acquisition. And then coming up next, our friends from Down Under working at the Stone Project in Canada, AW1. Great results, yet got hammered today, minus 21% on the ASX, quite brutal today, even though they produced, uh, for example, 42.8% mineralization at uh, 0 0.3 meter thickness. Your thoughts, Stein? Yeah, definitely. Like you said, uh, great drilling results. Uh, we saw, for example, 2.2% over a 46 meter strike length, and then again, 1.5% over a 27 meter strike length. So the drill results were certainly really solid on a copper perspective. And then the share price got hammered on the meantime. Um, maybe that doesn't really necessarily have to do with the drills of themselves but just profit taking happening in the market exactly just keep in mind can always be business case driven but can also be investor uh, driven those people that got in at four cents that were now 8x up 10x up that they took profit i'm not worried as a long-term shareholder um, i think the project is way on track with dave and team so nothing to worry for me do I know for certain where we will be in 12 months time with AW1? No, my glass ball is not working currently, but I'm not worried as a shareholder right now. All right, perfect. And what is the next company you want to talk about, Arne? Yeah, the next company, Argentina, Portofino. We talk a lot about uh, the Quebec, James Bay area, um, but Argentina remains one of the largest lithium producers in the world. Um, Portofino, they're currently bidding for the sixth largest Salar lithium solar in the world, 1,600 square kilometers. And I find that extremely exciting because we also have a company on our watch list that's due to IPO later this year, and that is Ecosol from Australia. DLE, Stein, what is it all about? Yes, DLE is direct lithium extraction, and that's of course a technology that's currently being developed, which doesn't re uh, require those enormous uh, fields of water for evaporation, but it can just extract that lithium directly from the lithium brine. That's gonna be very crucial for ESG scores, reducing the environmental impact also for those lithium operations in Argentina. Um, we also hope that it will have a positive effect on the outlook of the juniors like Usha Resources and Rover Metals out of Nevada. Quick addition on that one, it might also be an enormous cost saver in the future because as you can imagine, not having those enormous fields filled with water and then evaporating might also be a cost saver in the future. Absolutely. So some fantastic stories. Um, still trying to get Ecosol into our format. So if Ecosol management are watching, Guys, please get in touch with us. We'd love to have you on our show. Exactly right. And what is the next company you want to talk about, Arne? The next company that we have is Power Nickel. We've done quite a few uh, clips with them in the past. You might have seen them this summer. Now they sealed the partnership with the CBMR. Very interesting hidden champion in the nickel space. I have never heard about them before. Um, the likes of even Terry, the CEO of Power Nickel, hadn't even heard about them before. They work for the US Treasury, for example, also have a lot of applications in defense. Why did they invest in Power Nickel? They believe that they can achieve a 3x higher revenue London Metal Exchange prices for nickel with only 12% higher cost base. So that's very, very interesting. That's why they invested in Power Nickel. And we want to get these guys. Terry promised me we'll have them on the show. So I look forward to it's a brother and a sister, CVMR, this hidden champion in the nickel special application space, and to understand 
why did they invest in power nickel exactly right really excited for that interview and that was the end of this new format our weekly news update thanks guys